Hello, welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 242. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is Monday, February 23rd, 2015, and this is a knitting show. <laughs> it is. My brain is a little tired. Um, if you hear background noise, Michael's doing dishes, and it sounds more like he's swimming in dishes, but, um, sorry. He's doing dishes, so, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, anyway, would you like to show off your knitting first, or would you prefer that I? I can go first. Uh, um, I am, two stitches maybe there. There we go. I am starting the toes in a pair of socks. There we and gray. This is the best stitch of the color. Um, so they are just the tips of the toe because yesterday while I was watching the Oscars, I finished the ribbing on the other one. So basically all I made during the Oscars was this ribbing on the tip of those toes. <laughs> but I didn't watch the whole thing. Um, I went to bed around, well, I went to go read around 9.30 after they did the, um, in memory of Texan. So, um, yep, so there's the first one. The gray that you see at the very tip is Knit Picks. And then the very, very pretty striping is Quair. Or is it Quair or Quarry? It's Quarry. Okay, Quarry. You look confused. I am confused. Well, that's how my internet wife, Amy Beth, says it, so I'm just going to assume she's right. Okay. And this is the patchwork colorway. It's got, um, it starts with a light green that goes to a gray, again, the best of the colors. Then an orange, a light purple like an orchid, a dark purple, a little bit like bluish gray, then a yellow, a navy, a light blue, and then a white. So those repeat. I have some scrap yarn in there, some waste yarn, because there's going to be an afterthought heel coming shortly and the afterthought heel is also going to be gray to match the cuffs and the toes this yarn is sold um, currently in 600 yard skein so if you have big feet you can split it by using different yarn for heels and toes and cuffs if you have small feet you and you have a friend with small feet you could split it between mm -hmm. the two of you individually. I do not have small feet I have size 10 feet so these will, I split it with my friend Becca, and uh, this will work out great for me. I have this much, she and my toe have left, so I have that much of the size striping. So did you weigh it to determine when to stop? Yeah. So what I did, um, oh, like, on this, no. I just did it to the length I wanted. Oh, okay. I don't do that, but when I split it in half and I weighed it, so that she would get half of it. Um, and the knit picks that I'm using is scroll fingering in the ash colorway. Just like that. So that is my first work in progress. My second work in progress, really the knitting is done. It just needs to do some finishing um, or have some finishing done, which is, seems to be like the story of my life lately. Um, I mean, held up by a lot of finishing, um, which is probably my least favorite part of knitting. But what I am working on is for my owl, which is um, the Harry Potter Knit and Crochet House Cup, has a group on Ravelry, and they have all these things that you can do. Um, and there's classes once a month, but a project that spans over the course of three months is called an owl. So I got the first five things done for my owl, which means I hit my halfway point. And uh, I took pictures, and I posted that earlier. I might have to retake some pictures, because one of the things is you have to see the whole object, and I think in one. It's cut off. off. Because I am a poor, poor photographer with the iPhone and my dress warm, because that's what I had. So um, this is project number six, and they are the Retro Thrum Slippers. Um, this was a pattern published by Imperial Stock Ranch that I got for $6.50, obviously, at um, House of Yarn a couple of years ago. When I bought it, I also bought a skein of the Imperial Yarn Columbia, not realizing that it, in fact, used two, needed two skeins because oh. it's not doubled. So 
so I still have a skein around here somewhere. But I had um, two skeins of Ella Ray in the stash. And this is the Ella Ray, um, just their basic wool. I think it's called, I don't know, wool. <laughs> um, that's very. Look it up on the internet. Wool. <laughs> <laughs> wool. Let's just look for wool. Um, but it is Ella Ray. It, it would be similar to Cascade 220 or um, Patton's, their wool. Mm hmm. Um, I'm full of words today, and none of them are the correct ones. So, the first slipper was already done. It looks like this, and it's got thrums in it. So those things are. Mm hmm Which are little bits of um, fleece. Yep. They're, um, I had some pin-drafted Icelandic roving that someone sent me, and it was from sheep that are kept on property that belongs to Jerry Orbach. Or used to belong to Jerry Orbach, who was this guy who was uh, in a bunch of musicals. Oh. This is where I know him from. But he was also on, um, oh, Law and Order for, like, forever. Oh. Um, he was the original, like, lead in Chicago. Like, the musical Chicago. Okay. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, she sent me some pin-drafted roving from sh some sh Icelandic sheep that hang out on his property, which is hilarious. I love it. I Six love degrees of wool separation. <laughs> Between myself and... Jerry know. Orbach. There you go. So, slipper looks like that. Thrummed on the inside. And then, this is what it looks like before it's seamed. So, what needs to happen on this? There's a little thrums. That looks a little bit obscene right now. <laughs> okay is um, I just need to seam it closed. I need to seam the back section closed like that. And then the front section closed like that. And look, they're even the same size. So these aren't felted, right? No. Okay. Uh -uh. These are size 11s for Rebecca Ann. Oh. So they will be going to her. Um, you just pull the stitches through and then seam up this section and then seam up the back. So you're on track to complete your owl. You're doing no, really I'm totally not. <laughs> really? Because that that's six out of ten projects, right? Six out of nine, but Jackery is one of the three that's remaining. Mm. And I have less than well, I have a month and five days. I still think you can do it. So things that are left, if we're gonna play that game, uh the Cursed and Kapoor Mystery Shawl. Which only has one clue left one, right one clue plus the bind a crochet bind off um <laughs> which normally i would totally farm out to you well, but I can't. there's nothing that says you have to do that bind off you could pick another yeah. one oh i'll do that bind off though um if anytime you have to make a major change to a pattern you're supposed to like like that would be a major change oh you have to get it approved through the owl people yep um <laughs> for the headmistress <laughs> So, um, the Kirsten Kapoor. <laughs> okay, so you were we saying? Cut it out. I'll cut that part out. <laughs> He's just like setting off the fire alarm. Just randomly. Only when I'm recording. <laughs> That's awesome. Um,. Although last week, it made, or last time it happened, it made me realize that I did not have a fire a smoke detector in my kitchen, so I bought one. And a fire extinguisher, which was immediately recalled, because Kitty recalled a whole bunch of their fire extinguishers. Nice. So I have to deal with that. Um, anyway, back to knitting. So, things that are left. Jackaroo, which only has, like, half the back done. <laughs> um... The Curse and Kapoor Mystery Shawl, which is missing a clue and a bind off, which was like this, you know, basically two clues. And then, um, what else? Is that it? So five, six, seven, eight. No, I'm missing something. That might be it. No, wait. So five things when I finish this. This would be six. I had nine total. What else am I missing? Crap, God, I'm dear. so... I'll figure it out. Or I'll tell you later. But anyway. I don't know. That's what's still left. Cool. So, not too bad. That's what's on my needles. Anyway, I'm totally going to look now what I'm missing. I figured that you would. <laughs>
But it's your turn to talk. I'll pretend like I'm paying attention to you. And then you'll interrupt me and you'll say, oh, I remember it was so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I took two things. Well, I took three things with me to Austin to knit. Yeah. Uh, the first is the Much Ado Shawl, which is by Sarah Burghardt Abram. And it's out of Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Showstopper, I think. Showstopper. This is the Beanstalk colorway. I really only got about 10 rows on this done while I was out of town. That's pretty. So I still have quite a bit to go. I've probably got a little under half of the skein left. Maybe about half of the skein left. So um, I'm knitting this on size 6, 4.0 millimeter needles. Is it rectangular or is it going to get no, smaller? It's, it's a long, skinny one. So you okay. go until you, you have a, a, just a little bit left, essentially, and then you bind off. And it curls upwards on the ends. So it's like a long, skinny one. Um, and the other thing that I took and... Oh, I just totally pulled that off. That I, I took with me, as, which got most of the work because it's so brainless was I took some yarn from Fish Knits in the After the Storm colorway. And this is her Strong Heart okay. base. So this is what it looks like in the skein. And I hope that I have half of it left. I have to weigh it because I didn't have a scale with me. But I knit on this most of the weekend. This is... Ooh, that's pretty! I use the vanilla bean That's pattern, really which is a free pattern by Ooh Fancy Pants, Emily. Very simple slip stitch pattern, and it gives a, the self striping a little something extra. Yeah. So um, I'll do a true afterthought on it, and I'll do alternating colors for the heel and toe, because I wanted to get every bit of this that I could. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's, you know, Roy G. Biv color sequence so that's kind of cool I like it. and i like that there's gray in between because yeah. gray is the fastest of the colors <laughs> it, it is your favorite yes so i'm hoping that i have half left in um this so i can actually make them identical if not i'll pull this back until i have enough because i've made this super long and i'm knitting that on my um knitters pride nova or knit picks nova i can't remember who makes them 2.25 millimeter needles, and I linked to the shop in the show notes. It's Knitter's Pride Nova. Is it Knitter's Pride? Okay. Just so you know. And that's all. I took um, Rose Shawl, the Bridgewater, with me, and I knit a few rows on it, but really that's it, you know, and it's just garter, so you can't really see the difference. So I didn't even bring that down to show you. And gotcha. I have no finished objects because I spent mm, most. Of I have the finished objects hanging out. Well, what are your finished objects? Hanging out. Did you find out what you're missing? Um, I uh, I did. I'm missing a finger of socks. So okay. it's the uh, um. What socks is it? The uh, I don't know. Hold Just on. looked it up, but you don't know. I just looked it up. The rock studies. And it's my pattern. Like, I can't freaking remember my own pattern. That's why it's out of my head. But the rock studies are what I was missing. Um, so, what I finished, and really what I did was mostly finishing work. Although the sweater is finished, finished. Um, I finished my Washington Square. So, it looks like this. Um, it stretched it when I blocked it. It got even bigger, which I didn't think was physically possible. <laughs> but it is big enough for me and Leslie, yep. <laughs> um, which is fun. It's a nice comfy sweater. It looks terrible if it's buttoned because it's so big. But if I fold it over, kind of give it a shawl color, oh. so it's not um, too bad. It's a good around the house comfy sweater. And that was knit out of John Q. <laughs> Nature's Touch, which is a New Zealand um, based yarn. It was made from the finest quality New Zealand fleece. If I had to guess, I would say those fleeces were Romneys. Um, although they were probably just all jumbled, you know, 
but it has more of a Romney feel to it than anything else. Um, or a longer wool. It is like almost a woolen spun yarn. So it's got a little bit of a halo to it. Um, the whole sweater, I love the sweater pattern. The sweater pattern is a three by one rib. So it's got lots of um, stretch. And while you don't do any waist shaping because it's that rib, mm -hmm. if it was um, tighter on me, it would give itself, it still gives itself some waist shaping. Um, so I really like the pattern. It would be perfect for hand spawn because the three by one ribbing would kind of even out any inconsistencies that you had in your yarn. And some people do this section up here. There's this like slip stitch right. window pane like section. Look. Yeah. yeah, they'll do that in a different. So if you just had like a pound and you needed like four more ounces to have enough yardage, you could do this in a different color. Right. And there's a bunch of them that have been done like that, and they look really nice. Um, I even sewed on buttons, which oh, are just plain black uh, plastic buttons. I put safety pins to make sure I was putting them in the wrong place, and they're still kind of a little wonky. <laughs> but they'll get fixed eventually. Um, it's nice and warm. I um, Modifications that I made to the sweater. The What I had originally knit, I had knit... 15 inches, I think, and I extended the body by two inches, which now I know that I didn't really need. <laughs> um, the body was knit on size eights. The sleeves were knit on size eights. I extended the sleeves by six inches. Also unnecessary. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just rolled over a wee bit. But yeah. Now, when I tried it on before blocking, it was perfect like they fit perfect they were um they were to this length with that which is the length if i'm gonna do long sleeves i want long long sleeves yeah um i'm no no bracelet lengths are allowed in this house um so <laughs> those got extended my row gauge was off which i need going in and um because of that I actually cut out, I decreased faster because this section I could tell was, well, it was red stitches at four and a half stitches to the inch. So that made it very big to begin with. That's like a huge number of stitches. So I knew that it was kind of going to be a little bit big and I was concerned. So I went down to a size seven because I wanted more structure up here anyways. Um, so I did go down a needle size. I also, because there were, my row gauge was off. I cut out 16 rows of this like welt pattern up here because you're supposed to do 16 rows of this for repeats and then start decreasing and I tried it on when it got to this point and I was like oh that's a problem <laughs> so I immediately decreased mm -hmm. and then did one repeat and immediately decreased again so I definitely decreased more rapidly up here um, I did add some of those rows back up. I added three, one more repeat up here. So I did add four of those rows back up here after I had decreased. Um, I like the, I did not add short rows to the back, which I thought I was going to have to, to get the back up high enough, but it sits up high enough that I didn't really need it. So, um, those are basically all the mods that I made. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else to say about it. I love the pattern. It's a Kirsten Kapoor pattern. It's extremely well written. Um, it's got great sizing options. I just, because I substituted wool, like I subbed out, I, I substituted out the fiber content. It was originally out of wool, but it was Miss Pris, which is a Schaefer yarn, um, which is like a light Aran weight that's got more ply structure and is more dense than this because this is a wool and spun. So I knew going in that I was probably going to have issues. And I started it in like, I don't know, God was a baby. I started this sweater. Um, one of my friends always used to say that and now it's stuck in my head. Um, I'm thinking I started it back in... I created the project page on Ravelry in 2011. Oh. So, it's been a it's been a fair while. 
Um, I started the month, like, the week that it came out. So it came out in... What does it say? Yeah, probably around that same time. So, and it's just been hanging out since then. But there's lots of pretty ones on Ravelry. The other thing that I finished that just needed finishing work is my little owl hat. So, um, I got buttons that actually look like this. And so, um, they are La Mode buttons. Um, 9 16th or 13 millimeter. And there were four of them on here. And I got them at Joann's for $1.75 with 20% off. <laughs> then, uh, sewed on the buttons and added the tassels. Love this yarn. This was a great project. And I think it's going to be Nick's. If he likes it. I'm sure so, that he will. I might go to him. Um, that was Dreaming Color Mammoth. Um, and knit on size 10 needles. And just an overall really nice project. Really quick project. And that's the, what is it, Chouette? Chouette pattern on Ravelry. Cool. C H O U. E T T E. So um, that's it for me. I did do some spinning. Did you do any spinning? I was not here all week, so nope. I know. Um, maybe you took a drop spindle with you. I don't know. No. <laughs> I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. Nope. I um, finished spinning the Joanna Spring bat, which I think was Barn in Winter. It's really, really pretty. I really like it. And it was spun on my Shock to Reeves long draw, um, a supported long draw, and it will be plied with some Luster long wool that I got at the Nadine Pipeline Retreat last year, um, which is on the wool, on the wheel now. It's interesting. Um, I had not spun a long wool on that wheel yet, and the Shock to Reeves adds twist really, really, really fast, yeah. like crazy fast. Um, it's got a very high ratio, and with long wool, because the staple length is so long, you don't need as much twist to hold it together. So my fingers are moving very, very quickly in order to, um, and my feet are going very slow in order to keep a twist, because if you add too much twist, it basically turns into steel wool. Right. Feels like that. So were you so, spinning it worsted or woolen? I'm spinning it it worsted because I have because it's a new to me fiber I've never spun it before I have um trust issues <laughs> with it <laughs> so uh I'm getting used to it still I, and plus long wool is not very good for spinning um long draw so it's not as good as short staple fibers so it's getting spun um, a sh short backwards draw very, very quickly. So, But it could go so fine. It could go like one little thread yeah. fine. I would let it. So it's, it's spinning up all though, I feel. Um, we have a question from D-A-H-L-E. Okay. And she asks about a specific yarn which is Malabrigo Merino, but she says Merino in general. So what do you know with Merino yarn? I have a few skeins of Malabrigo um, Merino worsted weight yarn, and it's so soft, which is so true. It is. But it looks terrible after just a few wears. Also extremely true. I've knit a hat and a vest and have been disappointed with how they look old and worn so quickly. What, what would you knit with this yarn? So... Um, with the Malabrigo, um, I actually have some. I wonder if my cord will allow me to do you reach that far. I should have grabbed it before. No, that's too far away. Anyway, um, Malabrigo Merino, which is a worsted weight yarn, is really a single. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a felted single. So it's not so much the Merino content, although that's part of it because Merino is a super short staple fiber. It's the ply method that Malabrigo chose to use with it too that makes it pill so much. Um, I use, when I've used it, I've used it mainly for cowls 
And because cows don't get a whole lot of, it's very soft up next to your face because it's a lovely urine for up next to your face, but they don't get a whole lot of um, fuzzing or pilling because there's not a lot of friction that's going on there. Hats don't get a huge amount of friction either. Um, but if you are having pilling issues with your hats, maybe using a sweater stone or something that depills would be good. Do you yeah. have any thoughts? Uh, I think a merino is, or not a merino, but a single ply is just sort of, it comes with the territory. It's going to, it's going to pill. Because, because of the nature of the way that it's made, it's, it's basically loose fiber that's just twisted, you know, so it doesn't have the strength of another ply adding around it. And, uh, like, Laura mentioned I would just do something with the low abrasion I would think for the most part unless you are out working in the weather a lot hats would be pretty low abrasion cowls would be you know low abrasion um, the other thing that you could do is melt maybe. with it yeah you can felt with it if it's not a super wash um in this case this isn't um what else oh uh because you're trying to because they're trying to create a balanced yarn it's a very low twist that they add to it mm -hmm. so that's another factor that goes into it as well i'm trying to think of anything else to say about malabrigo merino i love it like for hats and stuff i wear a ton of hats that are, and cowls that have been made out of it mm -hmm. but that being said mm, i'm not there's very little abrasion that's going on there with them as a whole and i don't wash my hats very often if I do, I soak wash them. Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, I'll wear them a lot. And unless they get dirty, they're probably only going to get washed once a season. Um, but I do know Malabrigo Merino Worsted felt excellently because that was done by mistake once. <laughs> so it will definitely felt quite well. Um, we have a book review, and it's an awesome book. Yes. It is from Folly Cove. And this is published by um, Classic Lee, and it's by Julia Farewell Clay. Yep. It go it retails for eighteen ninety five US, and Julia was nice enough to send us um, mm -hmm. the book for a review. And when and you we... get the book, you also get a scratch off downloadable code, so you can add it to your Ravelry library. Um, I like the premise of this book a lot. I do too. So, and part of it is like my library and geeky side because it's based off of um, Virginia Lee Burton, uh, who wrote like Mike Mulligan and his Steam Shovel, which is an amazing book. One of my favorite picture books of all time. Um, she was a force behind the Folly Cove Designers, a group of mostly women who collaborated to hand print textiles in Massachusetts. Um, From so, the 30s and, until the late 60s. Yeah, so there's that kind of inspiration from her picture books that Julia's used um, in here. I love it when people tell about their inspiration. Yeah, and so every pattern in the book is inspired by the work or personalities of the women that were in the Folly Cove Designers group. Yep. I do like in the table of contents, it tells you what yarn is used in each pattern because it's a classic leap book. All the yarns are classic leap, which are pretty, um, most local yarn shops yeah, they're pretty widely distributed yeah. and reasonably priced. So Thank you. That's what I was looking for, widely distributed. There are lots of gorgeous things. The book starts out at the beginning by kind of giving an overview of each pattern right. with some details about the inspiration. So I love that about this book. Um, there are a lot of pieces in here I really, really like. They have a definite style to them, a definite sort of flavor to all the patterns in this book. Um, they do have lots of beauty shots as well. So um, the first 20 pages or so are the beauty shots of the patterns and then you get into the actual directions. So the cover item is might be one of my favorites. It's just so really well 
um, photographed and um, designed. And that's the Anasquam Beret. I like that it's sized in three different sizes, a small, medium, and large, which run from 18 inches all the way up to 21 inches. I love all the little details. You've got the little ferrule folded hem. You've got welts along the top. And you've got, you know, you can add a pretty ribbon to the side. There it's are a, a lot of great nice, details. It's a useful braid. And I definitely could see people making this in a multitude of different colors. There are charts. Mm -hmm. as well as written directions, but the color work is, and the crown is charted. Um, very easy to read charts. Mm -hmm. They might be a little bit small, but they could easily, like, I can read them. I would say they're probably a 14 font, um, but if you need to blow them up, they would be super easy to blow Plus, up. Plus, you'll get a digital copy of the book, oh, yeah. so you can just hey, you're so smart. blow it up and print it that way. I like the natty turtleneck because there's a pocket detail that um, the beauty shot has. So you can see that there's these cables that go down. And they feed right into the And they pocket. feed into the pockets, which is super clever. I'm not much of a turtleneck person just because wearability in the South. Like, this has been the coldest week we've had. We've had ice storms all week, and it's been, like, 20s. So... Uh, turtlenecks for me are not super functional, but I love the way those cables lead into those pockets. It's a super clever detail. It's super well yes. sized. It goes from a 39 and a half all the way up to a 59 and a half. And it would be really, really warm because the, if you use the yarn shown, it's an alpaca, which would also have some nice drape. Yes. And, um, there, in none of the garment patterns have ease information in them, but I think that, uh, you can add, you can get an idea of it based on how it drapes on the model and go from there. Uh, that natty turtleneck has dropped shoulders, which is a technique I haven't tried yet, but I'm interested in. Um, she's also got the Meteori shawl, which is a, you know, beautiful classic design. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And it does look like meteorites that are kind of shooting across the shawl, which was the inspiration. There's a good variety of pattern types in here. There's skirts, dresses, shawls, hats, sweaters. So there's a good variety amongst all the um, different elements. I like uh, all the different techniques that are sort of uh, highlighted in here. The Lanesville pullover, which goes from a 30 inch to a 49 and a half inch bust. Um, I'll pull back to the beauty shot because it's got better photos. It's got this really cool color work detail in the waist shaping and on the caps mm -hmm. of the sleeves. And I haven't seen that done before. I think it's really cleverly um, designed. I also like that it's worked in the round to so the waist motif and then divided to work back and forth. And then rejoined afterwards. Yes. Yeah. So you're getting a little bit of structure added by that waist motif as well, which is really interesting. And you can move the waist motif to hit you where, wherever which your smallest point is. Awesome. Right. Um, she's got a big, chunky, uh, thick stole, which is a sort of a standard for your beach style wear. <laughs> and that is the Cape Ann stole. So you've got lots of great cables and a, a big, thick rib to the pattern. Do you need me? Oh, uh, maybe 30 minutes. 30? <laughs> Sorry, my husband is making me dinner, so. Aww. I really like the Burton Hills jacket. Maybe because I'm into, like, the big oversized sweaters mm -hmm. as jackets, because that was my intent with this sweater. But um, it uses Blackthorn, which is a wool alpaca blend, which would be interesting. Anyway, it is sized from an extra small, which is a 33, all the way up to a 52 and a half. And it says with a one inch overlap of the front bands. So it does give you a little bit of the ease that's kind of built into it. Um, it's worked modularly, which is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um it's just an interesting, different piece. And I, I really like the styling of this, too. It, it's um, very reminiscent of the time period that she was inspired by, but it's also very clean and easy to see the knitwear. 
yeah. which I always appreciate with styling. With lots of little details. Yes. Um, I like the Hetty's garden coat. Um, I wish that it with the size went up a little bit bigger. Uh, it's from 32 to a 41 inch, and that includes a one and a quarter inch overlap. Uh, it's got some leaf detail in the back. Yeah. Which is really nice. Um, it's got bobbles on it, which you could omit or include, depending on what you want it. But it is a very simple, clean line item with some pockets. Yeah, from the front. It's really pretty. Yeah. Uh, there's also some other items. A, a dress, a butterfly, color work, vest. It's also got a cowl that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. and a skirt which my giant behind would probably not be flattered <laughs> in but I think it would look good on a lot of different folks which goes from a 23 to a 37 and a half inch waist um, 30 to a 45 and a half inch hip and that's got it's reverse stockinette again with some really pretty detailing along the hem yep so this is from Folly's Cove. It has 11 very interesting patterns, and it retails for $18.95 in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. You can find it at local yarn shops. Um, some independent booksellers also have it, but um, I believe it's also for sale on Ravelry just as a digital download. I might be totally lying on that. Let me double check that. But uh, Or you could, of course, get it from Classic Elite's website if that's your oh, preference. Yeah. So um, we wanted to thank Julia, and she's the designer of Hero, the pullover that mm -hmm. um, a lot of people might be familiar with that. She designed tons of other stuff as well, but that might be one of her more popular designs. You can purchase it on Ravelry for eighteen ninety five. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I want to hear about QuiltCon. Um, We're skipping. We totally just skipped a whole section, but I don't care. I want to hear about QuiltCon. And we'll go back to pick, to books and such in a second. So QuiltCon was this past week. It was in Austin, Texas, which I have to say is a really fun town. Um, I didn't realize, I've never been to Texas. Well, I've never stayed in Texas. I've driven through it. Um, but Austin has a whole Keep Austin Weird movement. Which I oh, didn't, neat. I I've didn't never been know Austin. about it until I got there, but it is definitely a weird town, but in a really fun way. Like, um, there's all kinds of cute little shops and lots of food trucks and um, a cool, like, I was staying right by the convention center, which is also close to um, UT. Okay. And so it was sort of a college town as well. My pumpkin ale went over really well because it was bright orange, and orange is a color of UT. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, um, so that was fun. I So I'll start with uh, the event itself. I took one class, which was Understanding Color Value. And I do not remember the lady's name who taught it because I have a terrible memory. But basically, it's how light and dark colors... Um, contrast with each other uh, and I took it because I want to learn how to make value quilts and I'm terrible at choosing or deciding colors so she gave some great tips and tricks her class was all day long but I took it for the morning and then cut out in the afternoon because emo was arriving Sarah so I skipped the second half of my class which was you know probably a little bit rude but she still got the same amount of money from me so um, anyway so there was a class which was really um, useful, and they had uh, Janome machines in all of the oh. classrooms, which made me appreciate how much of a bear it must be to organize something like that, because they had dozens of classes going on all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, I only took one class, and then there was the vendor market and the quilt show itself. Uh, the vendor market was not as big as I expected. I guess with QuiltCon being, you know, sort of like the modern quilt event, mm -hmm. I expected it to, to have more vendors. How um, many would you estimate there were? Less than 100, maybe 70. Okay. So, like, like if the I were size to... of a stitches market, maybe? About half the size of a stitches market. Ooh. Yeah. 
and most of them were carrying the same um the selection of products the same um like layer cakes and jelly yeah. rolls and like all that because they all they were all carrying you know the spring lines mm -hmm. so most of them had the same there were a couple that had some really great um japanese prints which were Ooh. you know more expensive yeah but um it's gonna be more expensive yeah but there were some individual lines there like cloud nine and love cloud nine um some others that i can't think of but I really, I didn't get a whole lot of fabric. I did buy a crazy cutting table, which I'll tell you all about later. <laughs> but I only bought a few kinds of fabric. And when I will the cutting table be there? Or is it already there? Almost two months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so I got cute <gasps> cat fabric. That's so cute! In two colors. That's so cute. Because I know lots of people who love cats. <laughs> and true. then I got this cute letter fabric as well. Who was the cat fabric by? I don't know. I I forgot to. Is it on the side print? Like, a, is it there? It might be, yeah, but it's in plastic, so I'm not gonna open it. Um, so I got those, and then I got uh, this Blanche barrel bag by Swoon. Ooh, you can make one of those for me anytime. So. That would be a perfect mini spinner bag, too. Yeah. So I thought, well, I want to work my way up to the Amy Butler Weekender bag. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be a good one. That's super cute. And then I wanted to tell anybody who's a quilter about the site. Um, there's a woman there who was showing some software she developed, and it's all free. Everything's free. And it's called PatternJam.com. And basically what it is, um, you can either create your own quilt pattern based you know using basic blocks or you can use one of her quilt patterns and what you would do is you would pick the pattern say you wanted to do this one the whereabouts quilt and you would click on one of the blocks and then mm -hmm. built into the software are all of the common fabric lines so you could go oh, and look cool. at moda's um, walk in the park line and you could pick one of those prints and you could plug it in to that block so you could that's basically cool. see what your quilt looks like before you make it that's um, very cool so it's patternjam.com everything's free so i thought it was kind of neat and i was gonna test it out and play with it mama lineman would love to play on that yeah it's i mean it's still new so th probably it's only her patterns or you can create your own but um Anyway, so there was that, and there were lots of beautiful quilts on display, uh, including a giant one of Benedict Cumberbatch's face, and um, some absolutely beautiful ones. You can go out to Instagram and search hashtag QuiltCon. And you can I wanted to see you on top of that giant sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, there, there was a local um, store that built a giant old-fashioned sewing machine that you could climb on and pretend you were riding like a horse but I didn't want to test the strength of it so <laughs> um so there was that uh the market I walked through on Wednesday afternoon or no we got there Wednesday night Thursday afternoon but um and I went back through it probably five more times just oh yeah you, know, you never know what you're gonna miss and some people didn't show up till like Friday. It seemed yes. Like. Um, I did also get a shirt. I'll probably wear it next week. From uh, patchwork, patchwork threads. threads. Love patchwork threads. Yeah, it's... they have a knitting shirt now too. Oh, they didn't have that there. But this well, one looks like a drunkard's path. Um, yes, I've thing. seen that. One. Yeah, so I, I got that. Lots of great people. People were super nice. The food in Austin, so good. So. Um, there's a person who's sort of local to me. Her name is Julie, and her rivalry name is Love E. Lamb. And she, I went with Sharon, Seashore Sharon. We flew together, traveled together, and while there we met up with um, Megan, Crafty Pancakes, Denise, D. Nitz, um, Sarah, Emo, uh, Eat My Oxygen, and Kelly, 
It was from, like Spring Fling number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> from actually, all of us were from Spring Spring Fling. I know one. that's what I'm saying. Um, and Kelly from New Zealand, who I think is Birdie sixteen or something, but she's actually now from Australia because they moved after the earthquakes in Christchurch. But uh, anyhow, it was so much fun. I had forgotten. We hung out with. Um, Kelly and Sarah and Megan and Sharon most every night and Kelly and Emo like play off of each other so well I laughed until I had a headache of three nights in a row because they are so funny and then Saturday night um, Renee Knit Whiskers uh-huh. and Stacy Mustache Yarn oh, fun. came to our room and we all just sat and talked for hours and laughed and oh, a cake and pizza and knit and just you know just talked for a, a long time so it was a lot of fun um anyway back to the food if you're, <laughs> if you're going to austin you should try torchy's tacos Such that's what food. lynn was saying right i don't know what was saying okay maybe but it was so good so good everything i ate there was so good we had sushi at piranha killer sushi which was wonderful we had um Mexican, like almost every day, and I can't remember what the place was, but anyway, um, also we went shopping at some yarn shops. Yeah, we went to Hill Country Weavers. Oh, fun! And um, that was a lot of fun. They had so much stuff that I just couldn't pick anything, but Sharon <laughs> got uh, shelter. Oh, that's they nice. had like hazel or yeah, they had some hazel knits, they had some. Hedgehog fibers. I had a ton of stuff. Ooh, hedgehog. But I just and couldn't pick anything. Nets. Yeah, that would be hard to pick between those two. And then we went to Gage, which is in the same general area. And they had a lot of hazelnuts. So I came home with some of that. Wow. So Any plans for that? This is Atmosphere. This is Laguna. And this one is Malachite. And they're all artisan sock. Mm-hmm. And then... Renee gave me this, which was um, special to her local shop, and it is called um, San Giovese. It's too Ooh, pretty. Local to the town. Those are all gorgeous colors. That would be really pretty together, like yeah. a four color pattern. That's what I was thinking, and it's almost two thousand yards, so I might do like a a striped tee or something. I don't know. I got to play with the pattern so I can see what I can find. There's but... that like Gramps Cardi where you could get like another um like a gray or something that make those the stripe colors. Yeah. I don't know. I got to play with the pattern search, but I, I got all the hazelnuts and it makes oh, me happy. I know you love hazelnuts. Your nails look really nice too, by the way. Oh, thanks. They're just plain old black. But um Let's see, what else did I forget to say about QuiltCon? It was a really good time. They're actually moving it. It's not going to be in Austin anymore because I guess the Austin Convention Center is really high in demand, and so they're kind of difficult to work with. Huh. That's what I was told, anyway. I don't know what, how true that is. So it's going to alternate between Pasadena, California, and Savannah, Georgia. So I've never been to California. <laughs> now we have an excuse for me to go to an event that I can do nothing at but watch <laughs> It was a lot of fun. And they were so, like, I feel like a dummy because I didn't even think to make something to bring. And so many people there had, like, made these adorable bags or skirts or tops or... Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody was in their handmade gear, and it was it was fantastic. So I had a really good time. Um, it was probably one of the first trips in a long time that I've been on where by that last day, I wasn't, like, ready to go. Because usually, at the end, the last day of a trip, I'm like, okay, this has been fun, but I'm ready to go home. Yep. I could have stayed there a lot longer, especially when I got on the plane and my seatmate took off his shoes. Oh. Um, <laughs> so. That's like such a, oh, that's like that woman who came and sat next to me that ate the entire, like, she had a rotisserie chicken. She... <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? Like uh, a whole rotisserie chicken. I must have blocked it out. Now I fly Southwest and I like... I don't know, like, I try to make, like, I get out my knitting and I'm like this, yeah. try to, like, make people think, oh, God, I don't want to sit next to that person. Like, I've become that person that, that like, purposely tries to convince <laughs> other people not to sit next to them. Yeah, it was, um, 
the plane ride back sobered me up, but it was a really, really, really good trip. So good. I'm so glad you had a good time. I had a really nice Those time. There's some wonderful people too. Yay. That's exciting. Yes. Um what we are reading, I just finished Nightmares by Jason Segal. Um, the guy who wrote the Muppet movie and starred in oh. it. <laughs> Getting Sarah Marshall, and he was on How You Met Your Mother for forever. Um, he wrote a kid's book called Nightmares. It's the first of a trilogy, and it was really good. I enjoyed it. If you are a fan of Coraline, now I'm not saying it's as well written as Coraline, mm-hmm. but it's got that um, going to an alternate dimension aspect to it, Yeah. Um, as well as interpersonal relation issues with like parents mm-hmm. and siblings. Um, if you like Coraline or there's a author like Jacqueline West who writes an other world series, um, or like Holly Black's doll bones, um, it's geared more towards like the eight to 12 crowd. So it's on the lower end of my, but sixth graders need books too. <laughs> so it's that just right bit of like little bit of scariness, but more about growing up. If that makes sense. Yeah, sure. Um, so Kobe would like it, I think, too. Um, but it's a good one, and I'm interested to see how the series progresses, because it could very easily be a standalone, not needing to be a series. Um, so it should be interesting. What have you been reading, my dear? Um, so I finished, um, last week, I started and finished, uh, To the Princess Bound, which is another one by Sarah King. She wrote the Forging Zero series that I read last week. Um, I'm kind of devouring everything she's written. I really like her character-driven science fiction. Um, hmm. To the Princess Bound has a little bit of a romancy theme, but not so much that... That is now making me want to read that. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, I liked it. It was a really quick read for me, so... Um, and then I just started, I try, I've tried three books since then and none of them were hitting the spot for me. So I tried, um, Alter World by D. Rus. That didn't work. I tried Falling Free, which is by Lois McMaster Bujold. Yeah. And it's apparently really, really, really popular. It's it is. And it's a long series. Yeah. It's the Vorko Sigan saga book one. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't get into it. Um, really? That surprises me a little bit. Because I like how... Now, he's got epic fantasy, too. I'm going to make a suggestion for you, but I need to find the first. Well, yeah. Well, the okay. The third one that I tried was Shadow and Claw. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one... I've been going through Reddit. has a list of science fiction books. Uh-huh. Like top 100. And some of them are hitting the spot, and some of them are not. So, something that I would totally try, I'm going to put add it to the show notes, is there is a series called Fortune's Pawn, the Paradox series by Rachel Bach. I love the way she writes. She does really good character development. She does this series, and then she's got another, that Eli Moon Press series that I read that was Epic Fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, That's under another pseudonym. But she does uh, really good. This one's more like mercenary um, with plans, but she gets a she gets a job on a tiny ship with a nasty reputation for things going wrong, and the name of the ship is actually the Glorious Fool, which is a great name for a ship where things go wrong. Um, and from it's very like kind of like Sigourney Weaver alien type character. Um, I really liked it, so I'm gonna recommend that to you. It's called Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. I'm okay. going to add it. Yeah, put it in the show notes and I'll check it out. But it's a trilogy and I really, really enjoyed it. And then from there I read her Eli Moon Press series and then she's got a dragon series that the second one should come out later this year. But she's got humor in her writing, which I always appreciate. Yeah. Especially if you're stuck on... I've been stuck lately. I've been rereading stuff, so I re- reread her dragon book. I do like the dragons. Well, you should check out the one I'm reading now, then. It's called Immortal Coil, and it's about dragon spirits. Mm, I don't know if I'm down with dragon spirits. (laughs) I'll have to let you know when I finish it. Yes, you will. 
So we have a giveaway for the fix the stitch. We do. And then we have some Dream in Color Canyon to give away. Okay. So let me pull up the random generator on my phone. I've got to get a new battery. My battery keeps just draining like really? crazy. All right. So this contest was hilarious because we had like so funny. I would just read this and laugh on my 18 snow days I've had in the past week. So um, what I asked you all to write was like why you need this product and like Vicky with no E because I screw up a lot. <laughs> like, and that's just like there were 123 very clever, very funny posts. So it's two so. through 124? 123. 123. I'm including myself in the very funny, very clever posts. Okay, so I have not picked a number. And I will push the generate button. It says my number is 120. So five. Page five. I need to make this bigger so I can actually read numbers. 120 mm -hmm. is Lilda B831. So L I L I L D E B. 831 and she said she just watched the video this is a neat little tool and i've been doing a lot of multicolored knitting lately and this would be helpful for weaving and ends cool that's so true that's you could use trip. the crochet and for weaving and ends i have a difficult time finding the right size crochet hook or tapestry needle that is so awesome yeah Yay. so just contact laura on ravelry and send her your address and she'll get them sent out to you yep that is a true story. Um, other things in the show notes. Have we have Canyon. Yes. So the awesome people over at Dreaming Color sent us, oh, Canyon, and I just want to roll in it. <laughs> I just want to create a bed out of Canyon. It is an awesome yarn. It is applied, chunky weight, Aaron, Aaron weight yarn. Um, oh, it's not Canyon that I'm giving away. I'm totally saying the wrong thing. Mammoth. Mammoth. Mammoth is what I use this on. Canyon, this is what I'm using next. Because they sent us another <laughs> skein, too. So, and it's gray. And both the skeins that she sent me are gray. Like, people know me. Mm. Gray should be the show title. It's all about the gray. Mm. Anyway, so Mammoth. Purple. You're giving also. away purple? <laughs> because there was gray. <laughs> <laughs> um... So this is Mammoth, which is their bulky. Um, it is a lovely, lovely weight yarn. It is 125 yards, 100% extra fine U.S. wool. It's plied, so it's going to last and hold up really well. Size 11 needle, perfect for very quick accessories. I actually would love it for a sweater. Ooh, that would be lovely. <laughs> um, or a blanket. So... Dream in Color Mammoth is what we are giving away in that purple, which the colorway is Goblin Valley. How am I giving this away? <laughs> I don't know. So in order to enter to win, what do they need to post? You need to head over to the Dream in Color site and post your favorite of their gorgeous colors because they have so many pretty colors. And come back, pick one, post it in the group, or pick all of them. <laughs> and post them in the group. And um, extra bonus points if you put in gray. Really. <laughs> <laughs> not really, no. We are we are not into the uh, weighted entries. <laughs> Mainly because so, that's more work. <laughs> seriously. So one post per person. You must be a group member to win. This prize is not interchangeable with any other prize. Or exchangeable. Unless you just want to give me the purple this. <laughs> and um, that's about it. What else? The contest will end when we record Sunday, March 1st, to yeah. kick off the month of Laura. So. <laughs> we have to have a week of Kobe first because he turns 12 next week. Oh, that's so exciting. Kobe's birthday is right by Dr. Seuss's birthday, too. That's how I remember it. That's exciting. Yep. So we also wanted to mention um, we you have a few more days to enter to win the SSK Scholarship, which is sponsored by Three Waters Farm. Yep. And um, the goal is for the scholarship winner to share and inspire their home communities with what they learned at SSK. So in order to enter to win, you just need to write an essay about how you would um, take that so. information home. Yep. Um, 
you can also visit our lovely sponsor of the scholarship, Three Waters Farm. You can visit them at threewatersfarm.etsy.com or just their home site, threewatersfarm.com. And I think they'll be at Maryland Sheep and Wool. They have been in the past as they well. They just pulled out of Maryland. Oh Sheep and Wool. no! Yeah. That makes me sad. That yeah. means she'll have to get all my monies as soon as lunch's over because I'm not, not yeah. buying your. Well, you know what you could do is join her top of the month club, because it's I'll have really to reasonably after. priced. <laughs> it's really well priced, yeah. and her colors are beautiful. And if I didn't have all this waiting to be spun. I so want to join her top of the month club. Um, but anyhow, again, you have until the 28th of February to enter to win a scholarship to SSK. All the details are on the Super Summer Knit Together board on Ravelry. Yep. Um, we'll take all of the entries uh, on Sunday and we'll post each entry as its own post in a separate locked thread where our um, attendees can read them. And then we will send each of our attendees a link where they can vote on each of the, um, where each of them can vote for who they think should win the scholarship. So yep. Laura and I have no say whatsoever. It's all voted by the attendees. So I'm Sounds super stoked. Cool. I'm stoked too. I'm excited. Um, SSK has a very active group. Mm -hmm. We do have, I have to get Irish Diva, and we have one other person who got in like two or three weeks ago that I need to add them to one of the smaller groups. But I figure Kate knows everyone anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's very good at making herself at home. She's such a sweetheart. Yeah. Um, so I'll add those two people. They're going to be added to Group 7 because Group Seven's the bomb and they have less people. But um, that's about it. It's a very and they scientific have my reason. Yeah, and they have my mom and my sister. <laughs> Who never so. post. <laughs> Neither of those other posts. Someone's got to make up for my family's lack of involvement in my events. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, that's it for this week, I think. And uh -huh. I now want to go and sew all the things. Good, you should. And um, you guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.